I hope you enjoyed that video. And it is enlightening because it is the Word of God. But as we looked at the king of fierce countenance that's going to take Egypt, and that's exactly what the Bible says, is Antichrist. Who is Antichrist? Where does he come from? Who is he? I ask God these questions. I ask him what time it is. Lord, what time is it prophetically on your clock? Where are we with those snapshots? How close are we to your return and the end of the age? I didn't get no revelations, but I got some guidance in God's word by his spirit. And this is what I came up with. See if you agree. Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Who is Antichrist? Verse 12. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How thou art cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mountains of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Wait a minute, we're talking about Lucifer being a man? Making the earth tremble and shaking kingdoms? Is this an angel or a man? Said it's a man. Let's go on a little farther. That made the world a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his pri He destroys what? He makes the world a wilderness? Has this happened yet? When did Lucifer do all this? Has he done this yet? Make the world a wilderness? And destroy all the cities? When the tower, like it said in the book of Isaiah, when the towers fall and, the, and a great slaughter, has that happened yet? This is Lucifer, right? That's a man that's supposed to do all this? Let's go to verse 20. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers will never be renowned. We're still talking about the same Lucifer here. And it says he destroys his land and his own people. And he's a man. Really? The Lord of hosts sworn saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have proposed, so shall it stand. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. And upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. What did God just say? He said, Lucifer, the man, specific race of man, Assyrian, he will destroy and make desolate our planet. 
He will destroy his own people and his own land. He will say in his heart, I will be like the Most High. I will get people to worship me. Is this not Antichrist in the person of an Assyrian man? Who is Antichrist? He's the devil in the flesh. He wants to be like Jesus. He wants to be like the Most High. And he's going to come in the flesh like Jesus did. Jesus was the Son of God. He was God manifest in the flesh. Who do you think any Christ is going to be? Satan manifest in the flesh. And the Lord called him the Assyrian. A specific race of people. Ethnically. He could have called him the Jew. Could have called him the Chaldean. Could have called him the Ethiopian. Just could have said the Gentile. But he called him a specific race of men. The Assyrian. So I asked the Lord. I knew about the Assyrian Empire that once ruled all the Middle East. That empire was huge. I asked him, I said, where is Assyria today, right now? And the Lord instructed me through his word saying, he plants nations and peoples like trees. He plants that nation, it begins to grow, it branches, spreads out, and no matter how far those branches reach across other borders, across other nations, what, however far it reaches, the root of that tree is where he planted it. I said, okay, Lord, where did you plant the Assyrian nation? Said right there about Lucifer, he destroys his own land and his own people. He must come from that land. Antichrist will come from Assyria. There's many places in God's Word where He called Antichrist the Assyrian. Here's a large list of them right there. I looked up in places He called him the Syrian. If you don't believe me, get a concordance, look up Assyrian. And you will find verse after verse where God calls Antichrist the Assyrian. He also calls him the Prince of Tyre. He calls him Pharaoh of Egypt. Prince of Meshach and Tubal. These are rulership titles. Antichrist will rule these lands. But ethnically, he comes from Assyria. So let's find out in God's word where Assyria is is. Stand by. Genesis. Remember God said he declared the end from the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning again. He's letting you know right out the gate where the devil's coming from. Right here. Book of Genesis. Genesis 2 and 13. And the name of the second river is Gideon. The same is that encompasses the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hittikel. That is which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And, and the fourth river is Euphrates. He said there's a river that runs due east named Hittikel. That runs due east of Assyria. Right out of the book of Genesis. So where is this river? I went to the internet, typed in Hittikel, the river, and asked for a map of the river. Stand by. Here's the map I printed. I don't know if you can see it or not. This is Syria. 
See where I darkened the river? That's the river Hidekel. Runs directly due east of Syria. You want to know where Syria is? Right there. Can you see it? I said, okay, Lord. You're saying that any Christ is going to come from, Sir from Syria. But in your word, you said in a mouth of two or three witnesses, everything is established. This is one witness to me. Can you give me another? Be careful what you ask God. He'll give you some answers. He took me to the book of Isaiah again. You can look it up for yourself. The Assyrian army encompassed Hezekiah, the king of Judah. Demanding that they surrender And give up. Said no gods. Nobody has stopped the Assyrian army. We have destroyed everybody before us. And his captains were speaking to the captains on the walls of the Israelites the Ju of, of Judah. And the captains of Judah told the Assyrian captain quit speaking to us in Hebrew language. You're scaring my men. Speak to us in the, Assyri in the Syrian language because we understand it. Say, what? The Assyrian in the Syrian language. Witness number two. And I can give you more. But all you need is two. Syria is where Antichrist comes from. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people out there who think he's going to come from the Roman Empire. He's going to come from uh, maybe America. He's going to come from here. He's going to come from there. I don't care what they say. I care what God says and what His Word says about it. If you go to Daniel chapter 8, you will read about two beasts. A ram and a he-goat. A vision that Daniel was seeing. And the angel expounded to Daniel what each one represented. One was the king of Midi was the king of Midian Persia which is Iran. And one is the king of Greece, Alexander the Great. And he said that the Grecian he-goat will trample and destroy the Persians and take over the Middle East. Just read Daniel chapter 8 and you'll, you'll see all of it. And he said that all of a sudden the king of Greece will die and his kingdom will be divided before the four winds. When Alexander the Great died, look it up in your encyclopedias. When he died, they divided the kingdoms up between his four generals. And there in the book of Daniel, the eighth chapter, he said that the, that the little horn, the Antichrist, will come out of one of those four divisions of Alexander the Great's kingdom. Alexander the Great never, ever conquered Rome. But if you look, what I just said about Syria being where he comes from, smack dab in the middle of those four. Want more proof? What's happening in Syria right now? Bashar Assad is killing his own people. Is that in the Bible? You'd think God would have left us a snapshot of this event in His Word. Wouldn't you? 
He did. He did. I don't see my paper here, but I'll just paraphrase it and I'll tell you where it's at. Daniel, the 11th chapter. Daniel, the 11th chapter covers the wars between the North and the South. If you stand in Israel, I don't know if you can see it, that little little white dot that's Israel king of the north Syria king of the south Egypt if you stand right in there you look to the north there's Syria you look to the south Egypt So I started reading Daniel the chapter 11 about all the wars and it takes you through Antiochus, Pythenes and all the wars back and forth. And then you get to the verse where it says that the wicked one, I just found Daniel chapter 11, the wicked one will come. And it talks about this wicked one. He is Antichrist. How he will destroy and go forth to conquer. And, and the three nations he plucks up. Egypt, Libya, and Cush. And the ones that escape. And then when he plucks up the three horns. The other seven are going to give him their power. Proclaiming him be the Muslim Messiah. He's Antichrist. He doesn't confess Christ. Jesus is not the Son of God to him. He denies the Father and the Son. He proclaims himself to be God. Here it is about Egypt. He shall stretch. It's the 42nd verse of Daniel chapter 11 about Egypt. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. And he shall have power over the treasures of gold and over silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Cush, northern Africa, Somaliland, Islamic lands, all of them. In verse 21 of Daniel chapter 11, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably, obtain the kingdoms by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood, shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken yea also the prince of the covenant and after the league made with him he shall work deceitfully for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people if you read all of this the abomination of desolation spoken by daniel the prophet he does entering the glorious land destroying the jews doing all all Antichrist beginning at the 21th verse 21st verse and I said we're in the last days and this is Syrian northern southern is Antichrist how close are we to Antichrist I know what's going on in Syria right now Bashar Assad's killing everybody So I started reading backwards to see if Syria was there. I got to the 19th verse. 
And it says, Then he shall turn his face to the fort of his own land. Wait a minute. 18th verse. After this shall he turn his face into the isles and shall take many, but a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered to him to cease. And without his own reproach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. Then he shall turn his face against the fort of his own land and his own people. But he shall stumble and fall and not be found. Now wait a minute. That's an awful small little thing. This, he's going to turn his face against his own land and his own people. What does that mean? The Bible says the face of the Lord is against all those who do evil. Against his face. Lord, cause thy face to shine upon me. Lord, I seek thy face. When a king, it's, it's a Middle Eastern term. Remember, Middle Eastern people wrote this. It's their terminology. If you said, man, that's bad, to one of them back there, they think you're saying it, it was no good. In today's world, that could mean good. When a king set his face against another king, it means they went to war. Just before Antichrist, the king of Assyria will set his face against the people of his own land. It means he goes to war with them. But the Bible says right here, he will come to an end. Bashar Assad will end. The Bible says he will. But what does it say happens after that? Next verse. Then shall stand up in his stead an executor of the land. But within few days shall he be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. What is an executor? What's an executor of an estate? An overseer. It sees over the affairs for someone else, right? How about an interim government that takes over after Bashar Assad's gone? But it says the man will die after not many days. Then the wicked one will come up and take the kingdom. This man's going to die before the elections takes place. And Antichrist is going to come and win the election and become the new ruler of Syria. He will take Egypt, Libya, and Cush. In submission, they will follow him and all the other seven. King of Babylon, Iraq, the Iranians, Greece, Turkey, they're going to give him his power. Turkey's number two in NATO militarily. Second only in military to the United States. Let all these Islamic, Islamic people go under the banner of an Islamic Messiah. And you've got 1.6 billion reasons That is the beast kingdom that is to come. You don't have to take my word for it. Watch the following video. And believe.